Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today we're going to go over just how you pass along VLAN tags to virtual machines. And this is something that seems to come up a lot, uh, generally for folks that are a little newer to networking, uh, the guts of it, maybe layer two is, is kind of a new thing to them, or perhaps just they're good with networking or at least experienced, but they're new to the whole virtualization piece of the equation. So it really all starts with making sure that the ports that are connecting from your physical switch to your vSphere hosts are being trunked. And this term has meant different things in the past. I'll go ahead and pull up my HP switch config here. I've got a HP V1910 in the lab. As you can see, it says right here that it's a, a link type of trunk. Now, some vendors mean trunk uh, in a different way than others. Uh, I'm not going to try to confuse anyone. So what we're talking about by a trunk is that we are going to pass along VLANs on the link. Now, this is opposite of an access port. Now, an access port belongs to one specific VLAN, and no tags actually go along that port. They're all stripped off by the physical switch, so that by the time the traffic reaches the vSphere host, there's no VLANs to worry about. With a trunk, we've got the ability to do tagging and let the virtual host uh, handle stripping off those tags later on. Now within the trunk config here, you can see there's an untagged membership and a tagged membership. This is pretty universal depending on, uh, or really doesn't matter what you've got, Cisco, HP, etc. Uh, the untagged membership is works kind of like an access port in that that particular VLAN will not have tags on it. So you can see here I've got just VLAN 1 is an untagged membership. So any traffic that the vSphere host receives that has no tags on it is technically VLAN 1. And I've got two other VLANs here that are tagged, and that's 252 and 253. This is what I use for fault tolerance and vMotion. So let's go in back into the vSphere piece, and you can see here I've got, these are all the physical uplinks from my three hosts that go into this distributed switch. And let's look at the fault tolerance port group. Now I've gone ahead and to make, make it easier on myself, I go ahead and put a number at the end of each name, telling me what VLAN these belong to. So this is 252 on fault tolerance. And if I edit this port group and go to VLAN, You'll see I've actually set a VLAN tag here, 252. So what's happening is the physical switch is passing along the tag intact. The 802.1Q tag is stating that this particular packet that's coming down the wire is destined for VLAN 252. What the vSphere host does is looks for that traffic that matches VLAN 252 and goes ahead and peels off that tag so that when traffic comes destined for the virtual machine that's sitting on this port group, it'll go ahead and strip off the 252 tag and deliver the packet without any tagging so that it doesn't have to worry about, the virtual machine doesn't have to worry about looking for those tags. It just has an IP and it doesn't care about the VLAN. And there's different ways we could do this. I'm just doing the VLAN mode here for the, I'm sorry, the VLAN type. Um, let's look at another example. So I told you we look back at the HP that we have an untagged membership of VLAN 1. So the way I would set that up is, let's see, we got one right here that I use for the management of my hosts. And this is a lab, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend running VMs and management on the same VLAN, but uh, I can get away with it. So this particular one, if I go to management 1, you'll see VLAN says none. Because remember, we're not getting any tags for that VLAN 1. So I don't need to tag it. I don't need to look for tags on the vSphere host. When the packet comes in for this particular virtual machine, it won't have a VLAN tag. So there's no VLAN to concern ourselves with. Really all you're doing here, if I go ahead and make a new port group, is just answering this first question, VLAN. There's also a third option here you see of VLAN trunking. And what we can do is we can take a trunk and continue to pass a trunk. So we could actually pass a range of VLANs to this port group. You're not going to have a whole lot of use for that in most cases, but if you're running maybe a virtual switch or virtual router as a virtual machine, you might need to trunk VLANs into it, or perhaps you're running a virtual storage device 
that can listen on multiple VLANs, you may want to pass that along. It's a little more of a corner case. Uh, and that would be it. You'd pass along, let's say, VLAN. If, let's say, I had a new VLAN called VLAN 3, uh, DV port group, and then I would add that 3 there just to remind myself. And that would be it. You'd be able to listen to traffic on VLAN 3. On the physical switch, you need to go back and tag VLAN 3 to make sure that we're receiving traffic for that VLAN. And then any virtual machines that I put on that port group, as long as they were on the subnet assigned to that VLAN and were able to reach that gateway, could talk to each other. So again, the key takeaways are you want to make sure that you're trunking the ports that are going from the physical switch to the physical vSphere host and that you're tagging the VLANs that you wish your virtual machines to have access to. So that's your physical config. Then when you're in your virtual config here for your switch, you want to make sure that any port group that the VMs need to use are set to tag. I'll go into this one using this VLAN section, change it to VLAN and put a tag there. And then once that joins, once the VM is put on that port group, it'll be able to listen to traffic on that VLAN and, and respond to it. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.